Today's film takes us down to the riverbank to watch the dazzling bird, the kingfisher. The last time we showed this film, three years ago, your teachers told us that it had produced some of the best written work and artwork their class had ever done. So, this is a good point to remind you that we're always tremendously interested to see the sort of things you write and draw. Some of you, I know, already receive our magazine, The Picture Box Review. The latest issue tells about a very special artistic challenge that we're issuing and which some of you may like to accept. So, if you don't already receive the review, send a large stamped and addressed envelope to Picture Box, Granada Television, Manchester, and we'll post you a copy. And now, down to the riverside. Imagine that it's late April. Spring on the river. Yellow iris line the open banks. Curtains of weeping willow brush the surface. A lazy, slow-moving river, this. But there's plenty of life if you look for it. A water rat paddles for the safety of the home bank. A heron, the kingfisher's rival, waits patiently for a meal to come his way. Under the bank, a short-tailed vole washes himself at the water's edge. May in May. The clear, rippling streams that feed the river contain an underwater world of their own. The bullhead shuffles down among the stones. It's a common prey of the kingfisher. And so is the minnow. Those white spots on its head aren't bubbles, but warts associated with courtship. Into this flickering, quiet world, the hero of our story makes his entry. The kingfisher, the most beautiful bird in Britain. He knocks out the fish and swallows it head first. His back is a dazzling metallic blue, or it can look emerald green depending on the light. Underneath, he's warm chestnut orange. A stumpy bird, standing barely five inches high. A fine head, white cheeks and throat, with a large black bill. His feet are ceiling wax red, and unusual because two of the toes are joined as far as the second joint. He chooses his moment, and then swiftly, like a jeweled dagger, he strikes. But this time, the fish escapes. On average, an adult kingfisher makes a catch once in every three dives. In other words, he only has a go when he's pretty sure of success. This is how the kingfisher sees a minnow. And this is a minnow's eye view of a kingfisher. The female kingfisher to look at is almost exactly the same as her mate. The only difference being the lower half of her bill, which is orange instead of black. She's got one. But she's accidentally speared it with her beak. She doesn't immediately know how to cope with the problem, and she flies off. Meantime, the male has spotted another minnow. He takes off, and in ultra-slow motion, we follow him into the water. But if at first you don't succeed, he's got it.
As another new day begins on the river, let us keep our vigil at the water's edge. Already the swans have built a home, but the kingfishers have yet to start on theirs, which will be deep in the river bank. Almost any bank may be chosen by the pair as a possible site for their nest, but once decided, it becomes the centre of their territory, and they will not allow any other kingfishers on this stretch of the river. They hurl themselves at the bank with their heavy bills time and time again, and then shake off the spoil. For the first day, the work's tiring, even though it's shared between the sexes, and they often stop for a rest. But the next day, the female finds she can just perch on the rim, and the tunnelling can really begin. Places and the male brings out quite a large pebble. The specially adapted feet shovel out the soil. They have to make a two-foot tunnel and at the end a circular chamber. At the end of five days, the birds look back, as if to admire their handiwork. Three days later, a strange call is heard. The hen is ready for mating. But first, the pair will perform a little ceremony of courtship feeding. On hearing the call, the cock has caught a fish, and he holds it head outwards, ready for the presentation. The following day, the first egg is laid. It's delicate pink in colour and about three quarters of an inch long. Outside, the mating ceremonial is being performed again. After five days, the clutch is complete and incubation can begin. The three week sitting is up and the birds are busy delivering tiny fish to tiny offspring. But quite sizeable offerings are brought a week later. Framed in the tunnel entrance, the parent holds the fish in the head outwards position, ready for feeding. The clamour's kept up whether the beaks are open or closed. How kingfishers feed their young in nature has never even been seen before. It was thought not long ago that the parents tore up the fish in pieces before feeding it to their young. But we now know that the fish is given whole, even though it may be almost as long as the chick. About six good-sized fish are taken each day by each youngster, and in between whiles, the family are brooded. The young kingfishers are now a fortnight old, and constantly clamouring for more food. Each parent is having to catch about 30 fish a day, but fishing, of course, takes time.
Not all kingfishers will stop to bathe from a perch. Others will take three or four quick dips in the course of their everyday business. Three weeks old, the brood really looked like kingfishers, and they're as hungry as ever. But the fish has to be knocked out, and a big bullhead takes a lot of killing. Any morning now, they'll be following the parent out of the nest hole for the first time. And we shall find them trying to fish for themselves at the edge of the stream. These two youngsters are taking their first look at the outside world. Newly fledged kingfishers are duller than their parents, with rather short black bills. This one has already caught his first fish. A stickleback makes a good breakfast. However, he has yet to learn the knack of fish whacking. It takes a number of trials before the fish is swallowed. Two more members of the brood, downstream a little, are disputing the ownership of a catch. The other one, meanwhile, has digested his stickleback and now comes to deal with the problem of the fish bones. The pellet of indigestible remains is regurgitated because the bird system can't cope with the bones and stickleback spines. The first few days out of the nest are very chancy for inexperienced kingfishers. The basic idea of fishing may be instinctive, but the technique has to be learnt. An adult will make a catch about once in three dives. A fledgling, perhaps, once in twenty. And such frequent wetting seems to kill quite a few youngsters from either cold or drowning. Sparrow hawks and stoats take a few as well, so it's important to have a safe roosting place. Tomorrow will be another busy day for this youngster. And if we're lucky enough to catch a glimpse of him, let us feast our eyes on his bright plumage, the kingfisher. Surely the most beautiful bird in Britain. What a beautiful bird it is. The kingfisher is also known, by the way, as the halcyon. Sounds magical, doesn't it? I wonder if you could invent any equally magical sounding names for it. In a few weeks' time, we shall be coming up to what are known in old folk legends as the halcyon days. What on earth do you suppose they are? Try and find out. And when you've discovered the old legend, watch carefully to see if it comes true this year. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.